Hi, Deviriens. Aren't you tired of this fast-paced life, uh, all stressful? Have you ever thought of leaving everything behind, going to the mountains to enjoy fresh air every day, surrounded by nature, everything peaceful, calm, while you're grazing your beautiful silkworms? Okay, maybe the worms weren't part of your dream, but they come with the price. So you can have all these things to Silk. Silk is a game by Luis Ranedo and with art by Roque Spinet for two to four players that last about 45 minutes more or less. Silk takes us to the Devil Bears many centuries after the Bitoku. What were once great spirits of the forest are nowadays Omamushi, domestic silkworms and wild Okami wolves. And in all that environment, you're going to be a sick gatherer. And with the help of your shepherd and your mastiff, you will take care of your silkworms, looking for the best pastures and trying to avoid the Okami. Everything to maximize the silk that you're going to collect from those beautiful worms. So let's take a look to what's inside that box and then we'll show you how to play steel. Okay, so let's see what's inside the box and then we will show you how to play silk. Once you open the box you will find the rule book with everything well explained and a lot of pictures with, with examples uh, to make it more understandable. You have also a summary of the rules here, very useful once you know how to play the game. You have also two boards. One uh, is the track for, for the score and the other one is the, is the board with the actions that you have in the game and also the Okami then where the capture seal worms will be put. We're going to explain you all that, don't worry. You have also four improvement markers. Those, uh, those markers will give extra points to the first player to achieve certain goals during the game. You have two dice, 20 walls, and different tiles, different uh, terrain tiles with uh, dry pasture tiles, normal pasture tiles, those with the rocks, and leafy pasture tiles, all of them with a barren terrain in the other side. And you have also a special one that once works uh, as, a, as a regular uh, pasture tile, but it has a, a draw of the Okami because it's where the Okami starts the game. You have also the Okami marker here. The Okami. And you have also four equal sets, uh, one per player, and those sets include a Shepherd, a Mastiff, four um, Silkworm Nurseries, and 15 of those uh, beautiful silkworms and also a score tracker okay with a plus 50 here is at any point you have more than 50 points just whoop, turn it up and start over and that's what is included in the box now we're going to show you how to play silk We're going to divide the setup in two different parts, one for the playing zone and the other for the deployment of the players. First of all, you have to take um, the, uh, the Okami tiles, separate it from the others, shuffle all the other tiles and take some of them, a different number, depending on the number of players that you're going to play. For a two-player game, take uh, it's 19 of those tiles, then add the Okami, that will be a total of 20, shuffle all of them and create a playing zone of 4 by 5 that we have here. We're going to simulate a two players game, okay? If you're playing 3, just take 24 of those tiles, add the Okami one, so you will have 25, shuffle all of them and create a playing zone of 5 by 5. And for a 4 players game, 
take 29 of those pieces, add the Okami one, actually all the tiles that are in the game, and shuffle all of them and create a playing zone of 6 by 5. Also, take uh, 10, 15 or 20 walls, depending if you're playing 2, 3 or 4 players. And finally, place the two boards on the side, okay, to, uh, close to the playing zone, the four uh, improvement markers next to here and the two dice. Then also all players take their material and now it will be time for the player's deployment. Also, it's important to leave some space between the tiles as we did here because some elements will be put in the middle. As you can see with the nurseries, also the walls will be placed here. And now we're going to see uh, the deployment of players uh, to get everything ready before we start playing. Uh, for the, the player's deployment, just all players roll both dice. The uh, player with the highest score will start placing either two silkworms on a single dry pasture tile or one on each two uh, available um, dry pasture tiles. So you can, uh, let's simulate that we are the brown player. We can or place two silkworms here or we can place one here one here. And you are going to continue clockwise. All players will do the same, choosing one of those two things, no? two on one or one on two tiles, until all players have placed seven of their silkworms. It's important to know here that uh, silkworms of different colors can be placed on a single tile. The only limit is that uh, the maximum uh, silkworms available on a single tile is of three. That's for in the entire game. So you cannot have more than three silkworms in the same tile. Once we have here, it's time to move to the second part of that deployment that will be uh, placing three different elements. Uh, one nursery, the shepherd and the mastiff. So we're starting by the player who placed the um, the, the last silkworm and going uh, counterclockwise, players will place one of those three pieces. And you will continue that way until all players have placed the three pieces. Okay, to place those pieces, uh, shepherds and mastiffs they must be placed on a on an empty tile. Doesn't matter, but it has to be in direct contact with the tile with one of your silkworms. So if we're going to place the shepherd. You can place it here, because we have silkworms here, or here, or here, but you cannot place it here, because in the surrounding area you have no silkworms. Same thing with the Mastiff. And for the nurseries, they must be placed in a cross of different tiles, that means or a cross of four tiles, or a cross of two tiles, and the limit of the game. And one of those tiles, at least one of those tiles, uh, must have at least one of your silkworms. So we can place it here, here, because we have a brown silkworm. But, for example, we cannot place it here, because there are no silkworms of our property here. Okay, perfect. Also, all nurseries at any moment of the game must be placed at least of, um, of a distance of two side tiles from any other uh, silkworm uh, nursery. So here we have one and two, that's okay, but we cannot place it here because there's just one uh, side tile distance. Once we have all the deployment done and the markers placed in the number five of the scoring track, we will be ready to start playing seal. A game of Silk is, uh, is made with players alternating turns until the end of the game. The end of the game will happen when a player reaches 30, 40 or 50 points for a 2, 3 or 4 player game. Or uh, when a player uh, builds the last available uh, wall. Or if after a grazing action all tiles have become barren, okay, whatever happens first. During your turn, you must do first uh, place a silkworm from your um, from your reserve on an available uh, tile, and then roll both dice 
and perform two actions. The available actions are raise a silkworm, move the shepherd or the mastiff, create a wall, build a nursery, and once you have all the nurseries done, regenerate a barren tile, grazing, and move the okami. We're going to see all those actions in detail, so don't worry. So first of all, during your turn, you must place one of your silkworms as long as you have silkworms on your reserve and you have an available space. What means an available space? You can place a silkworm or on an available tile around your, um, your nursery. An available, um, an available tile means, uh, or an empty one, or one with less than three silkworms. So if we want to place it, we can place it here, or here, or here. And you can place it also on an available space where you have at least one of your silkworms. Now the only one is here because you can see I have a silkworm here, but uh, it has a three in total, so we cannot place it. But you can imagine if that tile was like that with just two, you can place it also here. During that part of your turn, if you have no silkworms in your reserve, or if there are no, there's no available space in the, in the playing zone, then you just skip the, this part of your turn. And then the, th the second thing that you will do is the, the, the main part of your turn is roll both dice and perform two actions. You just uh, associate one die with the matching uh, number and the other also, and then you perform first one action, then the other one. You can perform the same action twice at the moment. Okay, let's imagine that we have two sixes, we can do that one twice. And you can also use seal points to uh, change the value of your dice, uh, increasing or reducing the value of the dice for each uh, silk, worm, uh, silk uh, point spended. So if we have a six and we want to turn it into a four, where is the four? Here. We can spend just two silk, worm po uh, silk points and then it turns into a four. Um, at that point, you can consider that the, um, the dice uh, wraps up. So if a six turns into a one if you add one, and the one turns into a six if you're reducing one. Okay. So let's see all those actions in detail. With a one, you can raise a silk worm. That's the same thing that we have explained before. Okay. Just take one of your silk worms and place it in an available space. Remember, or um, an available space around your, your nursery, so an empty one or one with less than three silkworms, or any other tile with at least one of your silkworms and with at less than three silkworms in total. At that moment, if you have no silkworms in your reserve, but some of them has been captured by the, by the Okami and you have, it, you have them in the den, you can recover one from the Okami den and place it in your reserve. If, when you're going to perform that action, uh, you have no seal worms, not here, not even here, or all placed in the, in the board, or there's no available space to place them, uh, you're, you're forced to spend seal points to change the value of the dice. So you, you can change the value of the dice because you won, or you may be forced to do it because the, you cannot perform that action, okay? The only way that you can skip that action is because you run out of single points and then you cannot change the value of the dice, of course. That was the first action. The second one, with a two, you must move the shepherd or the mastiff. Uh, movements in silk are made vertically or horizontally to an adjacent tile. So the shepherd can move here, 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 or here, in theory. Uh, what will happen here? When you move a pieces, you can bump other pieces. That's, that's the nice thing of seal. That's the, the main thing of the game, actually, okay? So shepherds, they can bump mastiffs and they can bump seal worms, but they cannot uh, bump uh, bam the Okami. They cannot share the, the tile with the Okami or with other shepherds. If that shepherd was here, you cannot place it here. Okay, let's put it back here. 
So when you're bumping any other pieces, uh, it's up to you to decide where those pieces will go. If we are going to bump uh, that uh, mastiff, you can decide if that mastiff goes here or here or here or here. Okay, we'll see it, uh, the mastiff, and now I'm going to explain you the mastiff. The mastiff cannot go here because mastiff can bump seal worms and can bump the okami, but they cannot share uh, a tile with the. Well, actually, no piece can share just the seal worms, but the mastiff won't bump the, the shepherds or other mastiffs. Okay, so you have all that uh, here at the end. It explains what, uh, what bumps every piece. Okay, but to make it simple, shepherds, bumps, sealworms, and the uh, and mastiff, mastiffs, bumps, sealworms, and okami, and the okami. We will see it when we arrive to the okami. So what will what we can what what can happen here is that uh, with your movement you will create you can create a chain reaction of bumping. Okay, for example, if we move the shepherd. We're going to bump the mastiff, and that mastiff maybe it will move here, and then you have to bump the sealworms. An interesting thing, thing about the sealworms, because you have more than one, you can choose where to move them. That's important because sealworms they cannot wrap up the board with shepherds, mastiff, and, ok and the okami. You can wrap up the game, so if the shepherd is here and moves here, it appears here. Okay? Mastiff, the same thing. The Mastiff was here and moved, it moves here. Same thing with Yokami. But Silworms, they cannot wrap. If the Silworms have to move here, uh, they, they, they don't come back to the game here. It represents that they are lost in the mountains, so they go back to, the, um, to, the, to their owner's reserve. So, coming back to the bumping thing. If, let's imagine that the Shepherd moves here, it bumps the Mastiff. You move the mastiff here. Remember, you are the brown player, so you want to move that one here, and the other two, they are bumped outside of the game. They come back to the, their own reserve. That's the main thing of, uh, of Silk and the, the funny and interesting thing, okay? You have to plan what you're going to move and what chain reaction you're going to create to uh, maximize your benefit and to piss off your opponents. So that was with the number two, okay, moving the shepherd or the mastiff. Another thing that I forgot to tell with the, with the first uh, movement is that the player who runs out of uh, sealworms first in the reserve will get uh, 10 points from that uh, improvement marker, okay? So just flip it and just add 10 points to your reserve. Once you flip it, it, make it uh, makes that uh, marker unavailable for the, uh, the rest of the game. So, let's go for the number three. With a three, you can build a wall. Uh, build a wall is just take a wall, and the walls that you're building must be connected to one of your nurseries. So, right now we have nothing here. We are the brown player. So, the wall must be placed here, 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 or here. With walls, what you're going to do is to um, separate uh, some pieces from the rest of the other pieces because the only piece that can pass through walls is the shepherd. Okay, the okami cannot jump walls, neither the mastiff or the silver. The shepherd is the only one that can pass through the walls. Okay, so with that, you will protect some of your pieces and uh, you will cut some ways from other pieces. That's Depends on your strategy, of course. Also, uh, let's imagine that you're going to build another one because uh, they have to be connected to one of your sealworm nurseries. You can place it here because it creates an entire wall, okay? Or here, 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 that's up to you, okay? But always the wall that you're building has to be connected with one of your nurseries. Also, those walls will give you some extra points. Um, if you close a wall, that means that both extremes of the wall are connected to uh, nurseries. And in this case, nurseries can be from different color, like that here, or they can even be the same nursery. Let's imagine that we are creating a square here. Okay, both extremes are connected to a nursery, even if it's the same one. So once you have once you done that, 
you will earn as many points as sections of the wall. So in our case, two. Also, we have two improvement markers associated with the walls. The first players, the first player that builds a wall of at least one, two, three, four uh, sections. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. Whoop, sorry. Will earn five points and flip the improvement marker. Okay, and also the first player uh, to build um, an enclosure of at least three tiles will earn 10 points and flip the marker. Uh, an enclosure means two or more uh, tiles already surround, uh, entirely surrounded by, by a wall. So pop, 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 pop. we have an enclosure of three. An enclosure of two is also available, but it won't give you the 10 points, okay? Sorry, because I'm messing all around, bumping all the pieces. So that's what happens with the enclosures, okay? Enclosure of three give you, will give you 10 points, and the other one, the other enclosures, will be counted at the end of the game. At the end of the game, you can earn extra points uh, for enclosures. The player with more nurseries on an enclosure Will, give, will win as many points as the number of uh, nurseries in, in that enclosure multiplied by the number of tiles in the enclosure. So, for example, let's imagine that the orange player, uh, the yellow player, sorry, has two nurseries here. That player will win two by two, four points at the end of the game. If there's a tie on the number of nurseries, no player will win uh, any points at the end of the game. So, that was with the three, building walls. With a four, you can build a nursery. Nurseries must be placed with at least two uh, side tiles distance from any other nurseries. And as we said before, on a cross of different uh, tiles, but one of those tiles must contain your shepherd. Okay, so we can place it here, for example. We have one and two and the shepherd is here. Not here, because it's at one distance. Uh, if the shepherd is here, the only available place is that one. But if we were the yellow one, it will be placed here, and that's all. Uh, let's imagine that the shepherd is here. For example, we can place it here, 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 or even here, doesn't matter. And once you have built the four nurseries that you have, you will win five extra points because of that improvement marker. And next time that you have to use that action, because you don't have uh, any more uh, nurseries, you can regenerate a barren tile that is around your nursery. So let's imagine that that one is a barren tile because it's around our nursery with a four. And if all four nurseries are already built, we can flip it and regenerate it, okay? But that's just when you have the fort already built and just tiles around your nurseries. Then we move to the five. With the five, you, are, you have a grazing action. Grazing is basically uh, bump all the silkworms on a single tile. So let's imagine that we're going to graze that one. You can bump it because we have the walls here. They cannot go here. So the only way that you can bump is to those pieces here. So let's imagine that we're going to bump it like that. And then you will win as many points as the number of silkworms that you have in the tile that you're grazing multiplied by the value of the, of the tile. The values are shown here. The, the dry pasture tile uh, counts one point. The normal ones, two points, and the leafy ones, three points. So if you're bumping, if you're grazing in the, in the leafy ones, you will, in that case, all those silvers must be moved here because of the walls. But let's imagine that we have no walls here and we have those silvers here. And you can bump it sending the yellow one to the dry one because it's more poor in value and yours here and becoming that, uh, that one a tile. 
and I have Baron Tile, sorry, and then though you will win here three points because it's a leafy terrain tile multiplied by two, so six. Okay, that's pretty much clear. Perfect. It's also important uh, to know what uh, pieces you're, what tiles you're grazing, where do you want to bump the, the silkworms, because by doing that you can even uh, send some silkworms to the Okami, the Okami captures the silkworms, we'll show you now with the six, or even if you are grazing some pieces here in the limit of the board, you can continue with yours but sending the ones of your rival to the reserve, so just play with that, okay, with the grazing. And finally, with a six, you can move the Okami. The Okami uh, the follow the same movement rules of all pieces, okay, vertically or horizontally, or horizontally sorry, to an adjacent tile. And as we said before, the Okami will bump the, the Shepherds, okay, so if you move here, Shepherd must be moved, not here because there's another Shepherd, but here, okay, too massive, that's impossible, okay. And if at any moment of the game the Okami shares a, a tile with, uh, with any silkworms, those silkworms are captured by the Okami and they are sent to the Okami then. At the end of the game, all your silkworms here will give you negative points. And those are the ones that you re can recover with the number one if you have no silkworms on your reserve. Also, if you bought the first edition of Bitoku, included uh, an special uh, improvement marker with the uh, Shinokami here. You can use that uh, marker to replace any other of the game because you can play just with four improvement markers. And with that one, what you can do is if in a single um, movement the Okami captures three or more seal worms, the player who, who was playing at that time can place one of their silkworms on their reserve on top of that uh, tile. And at the end of the game, the player with more silkworms here will win five points plus one point for each silkworm here. Also, if, uh, if during the first action that you can perform that one with the uh, one, of raising silkworms. If you have no silkworms here, you can recover them from here or from that tile, okay, from the Shinokami tile. But that's, I repeat, that's just if you have the promotion uh, tile that comes with the first edition of Pitoku. And that's it. You will continue playing that way with player alternating turns, uh, placing silkworms on the reserve and then taking two different actions by moving your pieces, raising new silkworms, creating walls and grazing and regenerating until the end of the game that we repeat will be triggered when, uh, once a player reaches 30, 40 or 50 points in, if the game is of two, three or four players. If a player builds the last available wall here, okay, but that triggers the end of the game, or if after a grazing uh, action, all tiles have become barren terrains. After that, uh, the, uh, the other players will have one extra final turn and it will be time to check for the final scoring. To check the final scoring to the, the, the current uh, score that you have here, you must add the, the points the, for enclosures, as we said before, okay, for each enclosure, the player with more, uh, let's pretend here, with more nurseries on that enclosure will win as many points as the number of uh, nurseries multiplied by the number of tiles on that enclosure. So in that case, the brown player will win one, two, per two, four points. One, two, three, and four. So you add uh, the points for enclosure, you add the points for a final grazing, okay, so that's important. At the end of the game, you will graze all the silkworms that are in the game, but without uh, bumping the silkworms or, uh, or turning the terrain into a barren terrain. 
just uh, calculating as normal, okay? It, it's, we are the brown player, so we have here one per one, that is the value of a dry pasture tile, then one point for that one. Then you can remove it just to make it uh, more clear. One per two of the value, two. And we continue doing that thing with all our silkworms, and all players will do the same, and they will add the points to the score that they already have. And finally, you will discount one point for each silkworm that uh, is in the Okami Den. Also, if you have the promotion card, you will add the, the points, that we, as we said before. And at the end, the player with uh, more points will be the best seal collector, and what is most impo more important, will be the winner of the game. And well, that's silk. Uh, a strategic dice action selection game, where it will be really important when to spend those seal points to change the value of your dice, and to see how the movement of your pieces and the bumps and chain reactions that we'll create will make the difference in the game. So we hope that you enjoy with Silk and remember to keep playing. Bye.